Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back inside. I tried to record from outside Celtic Park, but the weather, it's no great. The rain's back. I don't know why damage the new camera. So we're back in the loft, which I'm glad you'll all be happy with. Before we go any further, we are touching distance from 35 thousand subscribers we've only got a few to go so you could be the one you could be the thirty-fifth thousand. press the subscribe button if you haven't already It'd be much appreciated and as soon as we hit 35k i'll announce details for a kit giveaway on the channel and hopefully one of you guys one of the loyal viewers of this channel can be up with a shot of winning one of the new celtic shirts but like and subscribe and let's get into today's kind of shorter video from me at least I say from me at least because we're going to be speaking to Moritz Jens, the new Celtic sign and the new centre back at Celtic. Um, as today I had the opportunity to go along to one of these fan media press conferences yet again to speak to him. We had Aaron Moy yesterday, we have Moritz Jens today and who knows who else we'll have in the coming weeks. I think the main part of me being here in this video is to talk about Ange Postecoglou and his comments today on Sky Sports. He was asked about the transfer window thus far and the transfer window moving forward confirmed confirming that we're not done in the window and I didn't think we were done I said that in the last couple of videos I still think we will recruit in a number of different areas and it seems to be the case as the manager confirmed today he says we're still looking to improve on some areas uh, on top of the areas we've already improved on it was about filling in the gaps of last season the areas that we knew we had to strengthen and we've done that already with numerous signings we've brought in Jota and Vickers permanently Segrist, Moy, Jens etc we've made all these signings so far um, but as he says, we never stop and we don't seem to be stopping. So I wonder now where we turn to. I wonder who else is going to come through the door for Celtic. I think there's certain areas you can point to where we could do with more strength. The central defensive midfield area is certainly one of them. A few people on the channel have voiced their concern in the department for a striker or a winger, another attacker. And I still think we could probably bring in another defender. It would be nice to have more depth because we don't know who's going to move on. That's one of the other things Postecoglou touched on today in Sky Sports. There will be more outgoings at the club. I still expect the likes of Julian to move on. You'd probably expect Albion Ayeti, for example, to move on if Cubs, clubs come calling for them. I think there's some other players that we've seen in pre-season who probably aren't up to the, the standard required who could be moved on from the club this summer, which means there'll be even more spaces to fill in the changing room. Um, and I think a defender could be one of those. Today, the Express was linking Celtic with the likes of Jaffet Tanganga from Tottenham Hotspur. I think that's one of those lazy rumours that the papers just throw out every year. I feel like Jaffet Tanganga has been linked with Celtic for a couple of seasons now. It's one of those easy loan deals to make up. He's someone I wouldn't knock back. I think it'd be a great option for Celtic, to be quite honest. But... um. I think that's one of those ones that we just hear every year and it's a, I think from 2020 we've heard that rumour now and I think it's probably just been thrown out there because we've had previous interest but certainly areas we can develop on and I think that uh, it's good to hear the manager come out and say that first hand so to end the week some good news it's been a busy week for Celtic with two signings coming through the door and with uh, three weeks left of the or three or four weeks left sorry of the transfer window um, it looks as though we're still going to add more so that's nice so today I was down at Celtic Park we got the chance to speak to Moritz Jens uh, the latest of Ange Postecoglou signings a really nice guy by the way stand up gentleman he came round and shook everybody's hand right after the press conference I never had that before it was really a nice personal touch from the German and you know me I love a German so it's nice to have another one at the club hopefully a successful one at that not like you know Jeremy Tollian I think that was the last German we signed and we know how that one went um, but a very very positive guy Seems to be very optimistic and very um, excited for his move to Celtic. A lot of great questions at the fan media press conference today. I'm going to let it play in its entirety after this because I feel like it was a really good one. A lot of great answers to some great questions. Um, and I'm just going to let you guys sit down and get to know him and listen to him. Because he's someone that obviously we don't know a lot about. And he's someone we've not known a lot about. He came into the club as a kind of unknown quality, unknown quantity. Um, you know, he, he came from nowhere. I know he was linked with the club last year, but went very quiet, got his move to Lorient. And he now comes here on this loan deal, the loan deal where he made his intentions very clear today that he wants to make it a longer deal than that. He wants to stay at Celtic. That is his ambition. Um, I had the chance to speak to him. I'll play my questions first for you. Um, I had the chance to speak to him about the Champions League and the potential return to his home country of Germany. I asked him about his involvement 
in the, the, the derby, how excited he's looking for that in relation to uh, a question that was asked prior. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see him play. I think he can offer us a lot from that, that, that area of central defence where we have to improve on. And who knows, maybe he'll forge his way into becoming more of a regular and, and break the mould of that already well-established partnership that we have between Carl Starfield and Cameron Carter-Vickers. He's very eager to get into the team. He spoke on his chances of maybe starting as soon as next week. And who knows, we might even see him as early as tomorrow if he chooses, or if the manager chooses, sorry, to involve him in that friendly game. Anyway... It was a really good press conference. I'm going to let that play now. Not much else to report on apart from Ange Postacoglu's comments today. So that's it for the week. We've got a game tomorrow against Norwich. There will be post-match coverage on this channel as always. So we'll talk about that as we get into the last week of preparation before the season begins. How exciting. We've still got league predictions to do. We've still got away kit rankings to do. We've still got more transfers to come. It's going to be a busy week on the channel next week. But that's me for now. I'm going to let you speak or listen to Moritz speak and uh, enjoy that so like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow afternoon hi Moritz. um you spoke there about how your aggression and such a pr improved with peter grant obviously up here we have a very intense rivalry in derby with, with rangers i don't know how much you've looked into it and such but uh, the kind of games we'll probably need that you're looking forward to playing in a high intense intensity rivalry Also, you yeah, um, talk about the Champions League, there's a few German sides in there, would you like to play some of the German sides, go back home and, and take up that sort of atmosphere as well? Uh, I don't mind if it's a German team or if it's Italian team or Spanish team, as long as we win the games, <laughs> it's the most important. Uh, no, if it's Bayern Munich, for example, or Borussia Dortmund, for example, the atmosphere is amazing, you know, but you know, I can imagine nothing compares to the atmosphere here because the players of Bayern Munich and Dortmund, they dream to play here, you know, the Champions League evenings. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward. It can be whoever it can be, but at the end of the day, we try to win for this football club. First of all, welcome to Celtic. Um, you spoke last week about the opportunity to sign for Celtic last season before heading to France. How close was the deal to actually happen last season? Um, it, was, it was very close, um, but at the end, it just didn't go through the line, you know. Unfortunately, and uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you also mentioned that this was a dream move for you. Uh, was your was your exact words? Why is, why Celtic? Tell us why Celtic was a dream. Um, for me, you know, it's a big, big European club. You know, um, they have the special shirt with the stripes. You know, the the hoop logo. You know, it's it's very special to me. So for me, it was a perfect choice. Thank you. For FC Lorient last season, you played centrally in mm -hmm. a back three. Or as a right centre back, what do you feel is your strongest position? Um, I think right or left centre back. Obviously, we play with a four in the back at uh, Celtic, um, but I also like to play in the middle. So for me, it, it doesn't. Ma I don't mind, you know, left or right. It's for me perfect. Do you play in a, a like a high line, uh, a focus on winning the ball uh, back high up the pitch. Mm -hmm. What skills or qualities do you have that will help fit into this system? Um, I think my organisation skills, my aggressivity. Um, my anticipating of the situation, you know, because we will need it because we will press high and lots of running behind. Also, my speed on the first meters are important, so I hope I can help uh, with the traits I have. The team, Boris, we spoke to someone who knew you from your time in Switzerland. Um, he said you're very good with the ball at your feet. Is that something that you, you do think you, is a strength in your game? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, you know, I like to have the first. Uh, first pass in the game you know I like to create I like to give as soon as possible the ball to the midfielders uh, in good positions so they can create the attack and um, yeah I just like it I like to be in control and you know to dominate the game and we know that training under Costa Coglu is very intense how did you find it earlier today your first one um, yeah, it was it was very good you know I really enjoyed it um, it was a training I liked it was intense um, very offensive um, also lots of possession which suits my game style. Obviously, in France, we didn't have the same style because you know we fight for the survival, so it's a different type of football. But this year is really a style uh, that suits me. Yeah. Hi, Maurice. Hello. You spent last year with Florian and the year before that with Lausanne. Are you really looking to put down roots at a club and can you be that club? Yes, for sure. It uh, it would be my dream to definitely stay at Celtic. Yeah. Great. And last year, when Carl Starfield came in, debut season, great partnership with. Yeah. He's coming back from injury now. Do you see it as an opportunity to get some first team football in? Um, yes, I, I think it's a good opportunity for me. 
but uh, you know vice versa it can be with uh, Vickers it can be with Stahlfeld you know together um, so it's very important to have a good relation with all the defenders you know and at the end of the day it's important to play good as a as a partnership because we need to win all the games and we need to win trophies well, so you um, talked about your relationship with um, Matt O'Reilly from your time at Fulham every every conference yeah. don't worry I'm not going to ask about specifically um, no I was just wondering since you played with him at Fulham how do you think you've improved as a player now that you're teammates again uh, three four years ago I think um Good question. <laughs> it's very hard to tell because Matt is, you know, Matt, uh, you know, really exploded here last season. I hear. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a great player. Has a fantastic left foot. Um, yeah, I think we both improved a lot as people. You know, we got more mature. We got more. We improved all of our skills that we have, and um, yeah, there's not much more I can say to yeah. that question. So. Yeah. And uh, just the same question is this: um, obviously, with the Champions League coming up. Um, first of all, I'm looking forward to the atmosphere yeah. because that's all I've been hearing about and I've also been watching the, in YouTube the videos of Barcelona when they come here. Or, it would be amazing, you know, it would be a dream come true, you know, to play Champions League football for a massive club and, you know, I hope we can uh, win as many games as possible. Well, you spoke about uh, the sort of changing over to Celtic from Lorient and how it was a relegation and the Celtic will be more attacking than Lorient. You Defended a bit deeper. How are you looking forward to that style of play? Maybe a short passing game. Um, I'm actually very excited about it because, like I said, it's a style I want to play and the style that suits me. Um, it will be much different because uh, you will enjoy more the game, you know, because it's what we all like to see: is attacking football, beautiful football, and not you know sitting back. So it will be very exciting. You've done pre-season with Lorient and you're just here with Celtic, but are you ready to play at the weekend and will you be ready for the start of the season in just over a week? Yes, I will be ready for the weekend and I hope also be ready for the, the first league game, but at the end of the day it's the decision of the coach who makes the lineup. so I will see and I will train as hard as possible. Moritz, when you were at Fulham, you played under um, Peter Grant, um, who's a, a legend at yeah. Celtic. Can I ask what it was like to, to play under Peter in number 23 and what you, you learned from playing with Peter? Um, <laughs> Great, great person, um, like really a gentleman, you know, really, really great person, really nice, you know, friendly, um, really tries to improve you as a player. Um, on the pitch, different personality, very <laughs> like a lion, you know, very, very aggressive. No, I, I learned a lot from him as a, as a person, you know, also to be more aggressive, you know, um, which I was lacking at that time under him. Um, so yeah, after after that season with Peter, I you know moved on obviously to to Switzerland and to France, and then my game improved, you know, and my aggression improved as well. And it's now one of the key factors of my game. You said in an interview you don't see yourself as a classic defender, but instead the, the first line of attack. How much are you looking forward to playing under Ange Postecoglou with that style of football? Um, I'm looking uh, extremely forward to it. Um, like I said already. Um, it's a style I want to play, it's it's my traits and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward. Okay. Well, um, when you made, made the move from Swiss football to French yeah. football, you were um, given a challenge of playing against like, Lionel Messi, mm -hmm. um, I'd be able to De Maria. How did you change your style of play to, to accommodate it, to try and play against those kind of players? Um, obviously it's a huge step, you, know, you play against the, the best of the world. Um, with Lorient it's difficult because you know the way we play is sitting back and you know try to uh, hold the result to as minimal as possible and uh, no you need to be you need to make the space as small as possible you need to be very aggressive you know you need to get into their face uh, because this is what they don't like you know because if you make it difficult um, they start to struggle and also you need to to wait for the counter attack situations which are very important and yeah, that's how you normally play against these teams. Or if you're brave, like I believe this club can be brave, you know, against big teams. The way we play, I think we can we can challenge also the other big guys. Yeah. So overall, like through your football career, like who's been your biggest influence on and off the pitch? Um, 
for me, the player who look up to is uh, Bonucci on the field and uh, also Jerome Boateng, but only on the field, but not really off the field. I don't really look at uh, any other player. Yeah. And words, you spoke about your move um, from Swiss football to French football. Do you think that really um, improved your maturity on the field, especially coming up against you know players like Messi and mm. Mbappe and Neymar? It's um, obviously quite a challenge. Do you think that's really made you a better mature um, individual? Um, definitely. But also the time in uh, Switzerland was for me uh, a good step up for <coughs> maturity because you know we had a very young team, and I had to be. <coughs> Sort of one of the older guys, you know, in the team, and you know, take the the scepter. How do you say? I don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Into my hands, you know, and lead the team. But then in Lorient, it was also the same. You know, you need to you need to step up, bigger challenges. You know, more pressure. Um, yeah, which makes you at the end of the day more mature. You know. Um, no, obviously with Celtic, uh, they've got the kind of mentality that you can't. You know, not winning a game is not acceptable, especially yeah. domestically. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, are you looking forward to you know, the, the pressure and the, the kind of like intensity of every game as a must win? Because if you lose, if you drop points, you know it's you disaster. Have yeah. Consequences. Uh, yes, definitely. I look forward to it because uh, you know you want to play for the the big teams. You know. And you want to play for the team that wins the league, you know. So I can understand that you need to win every week the game. You need to be 100% at it. You need to work hard in training. So, yes, I really look forward to it. And, you know, as a player, I want to grow. And to grow, you have to play for teams like this. Hi, Moritz. Hello. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, you know, after your time in France. Uh, yes, I have a point to prove, obviously, because... Um, I didn't get much as much game time as in uh, in France as expected. You know, the start was very good for me, but then at the end, uh, it didn't turn out as expected. So I really hope I can uh, have a fantastic season and work as hard as possible. And finally, a uh, Scottish team got to a European final last year. Uh, do you yeah. think this club could achieve such a feat? Of course, <laughs> of course. Why not? Why not? We can go. We can go for it now. You can always go for trophies, eh? Yeah. It's always possible, you know? Every outcome is possible. <laughs>